it's Nikki here. I'm here today to do the movie review to go with the book Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. This will be a spoiler review. So to start, I loved this movie growing up and rewatching it yet again as an adult. I loved it. It's such a good portrayal of the book and it's just a good portrayal of high fantasy in a movie setting and I just loved so much about it growing up. It's it's such a good way to finish this to finish the series off. There's lots of action with the battles. There's lots of uh, like heart wrenching moments, especially with Sam and Frodo in Mordor. But most of all, you just have like this really good resolution arc where everything kind of gets tied up as by the end of the story, which is awesome. And the movie itself is just the final leg of the journey. We have Sam and Frodo in Mordor on their way to destroy the ring. We have Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli protecting Minas Tirith with Merry and Pippin along in various capacities. Minas Tirith is basically kind of falling under siege to Mordor and Rohan is on its way to assist and prevent the fall of man. Everything that's happened so far in the series just culminates into these final series of battles and actions by the people involved in the situation and it's just, it's a beauty to behold. <laughs> uh, with that said, I'll move forward with my likes and dislikes. Three likes, three dislikes, as normal. Starting with my likes, my first like is that the, some of the side characters got a lot more screen time and you got it with Merry and Pippin, especially Merry on the battlefield when he and Eowyn take down the Nazgul King, actually the Dark Rider King on a Nazgul. And I just, I love the, no man can kill me. And they're just like, ha, F you, dude. I'm a woman and he's a hobbit. We ain't no men. I just, I love that Tolkien did that. It was such a good loophole. <laughs> it was the loophole to kill the king. <laughs> and I also really liked uh, with the side characters, you got a lot with Sam and Frodo and Mordor especially with Sam kind of post Frodo going into the spider coma thing. And I really liked a lot of what was going on in his mind and how much we got to see from his point of view, which we hadn't previously. My second like is the entire scene where the ring is disposed of. It's such a good show of how much the ring corrupts because even the best intentions can be overrun. You see it a little bit with Sam, although he's just like, no, I, I cannot do this. Like, just think of my dad, the Shire, all these other things. Like, it is, it is evil and I cannot succumb to it. And then you have someone like Frodo, who has been carrying it for how long now? And he turns around and is just like, you know what? Screw this. I want power. And it's just like that feeling of final corruption um, from the ring over this character who's been fighting it for the entire series hard scene to watch and it was a very hard se scene to read and they did a really good job of it in the movie and it was just heart-wrenching to see all of this happening and unfolding before you which leads me to my third like the pacing of all the books this has probably had the best pacing com for going from book to movie and a lot of it has to do with the fact that this was the least amount of book being made into a movie the return of the king book is significantly smaller because some of there's a lot of appendices and like background information in this book so as you can see my bookmark is marking it and you can see like the final like third of the book is stuff that didn't end up in the movie because it was just information it wasn't part of the story necessarily and because of that there were a lot less pages to translate into to the silver screen and that uh, ended up having very a lot more effective pacing compared to the other movies. And that's all I have to say about my likes. I will move on to my three dislikes next. The first one is that of the three books and of the three movies, uh, this movie followed its book, I would almost say like the least accurately. All of the major things were still there, but how they happened were very different in the movie than they were in the book. And there were a few things from the second book that were resolved in the third movie rather than being resolved in the previous movie. So not as close as say like the first book was, but still much better than many other book series I've ever read. My second dislike is in the movies, there's a lot more like feeling of we could they'll overcome this they're kind of like raw raw well we just have to get back together man we can beat this like 
there's just a lack of desperation that I felt was in the books and it really wasn't translated well into the movies and I don't know if it's because the focus was more on the action and the victory of the actions rather than the prelude to the actions which was a lot of like psychological manipulation from Sauron and them trying to overcome it and raise morale enough to be effective in battle. One of the big examples of this was also um, the ghosts from the Path of the Dead. They don't play the same role in the book as they do in the movie. In the movie they really are just like this burgeoning hope when they're on the battlefield with like the Oliphants and everything which um, didn't really happen that way in the books and although it translated really that scene's specifically was really good in the movie. It just wasn't as close to the book as I would have liked. And it ended up, I felt like hope was given back to the fellowship a lot sooner than it should have been. It's just weird nitpick, just like the lack of the same sense of desperation. There was still desperation, but it wasn't the same quantity or quality of desperation. And that leads me into my third dislike, which was the pacing at the end. So even though I had said that the pacing was really good, it was until you got to the end. Because in the book, they set aside a ton of time for resolution. And in the movie, they didn't keep that. The resolution happened in a lot shorter time frame. There was a lot less focus on the dead and bur burial rites and kind of like recovering from the battle. It was a little bit more of like, oh, look, we're just cutting to the time where we are at the good point and we'll just go from here. So it sucks because I found that was st stuff in the book that I really enjoyed and it just sucked that it didn't translate to the silver screen, just likely due to time constraints because this was a long movie as it was. <laughs> and that's really all I have to say for my likes and dislikes. I will uh, move forward here with my characters. Alrighty. So the characters I'm going to talk today about today are Sam, Faramir, Aragorn, and Elrond. <sighs> So Sam is just, I have talked about him so much. He's my favorite character. He is loyal. He is loving. He is endlessly courageous. And he, I just, I love everything about him. And he just is such a fantastic protagonist. And I've already kind of talked about him, so I will stop. <laughs> Moving on to Faramir. Second character, same thing. Loyal, loving. He's endlessly, almost recklessly courageous although some of it has to do more with his dad and his family dynamics than actual courage but still he was such an interesting character and i'm really glad that even if his role wasn't as developed in the movie as it was in the book that they still kept the like really important things to his character and it was a lot of fun to see him on the big screen doing all the big hero stuff <laughs> uh, the third character, Aragorn, I'm going to talk about him a bit because it was really interesting, especially in this final book, to see the like the final strokes of his character development. Because you, you got a lot of interesting things from him. You, he started off as Strider, as this ranger who was going to protect the hobbits. And by the end of the series, he's just, he's the king of man, basically. He's the king in Minas Tirith and of Gondor. And it was just, it was so interesting to watch the final things, like him really accepting what the responsibility of the throne is going to be of recruiting the ghosts to fulfill their oath so they can rest in peace. Uh, the diplomacy he uses in how he interacts with other lords of the realm and just the decisions he makes and how they change kind of once he feels the weight of the kingdom on his shoulders and understand and just really accepts that he's responsible for so many people. It was just, it was a lot of fun to see and Viggo Mortensen did a brilliant job playing him in the movies and it really just accumulated to just this like amazing, amazing portrayal of Aragorn in the final movie. And then I will go to Elrond, who's my fourth character. He wasn't super major, and although it was shown in only little bits and pieces in this third movie, I loved his blatant disapproval of Aragorn for his daughter. It was super funny, and it's just like, oh yeah, overprotective dads, they exist everywhere. Awesome. And that's all I really wanted to talk about with him. Nothing special, nothing crazy, just something fun. <laughs> and overall, with just all of the characters, it was really fun to see them kind of get into their final roles to take their final actions and to see what roles they play in the resolution. So like Mary and Pippin in the, in the war and then after at the coronation and Sam and Frodo and their role in Mordor and like the utter 
amazement and of survival when there was the expectation of death. It was just, it was really fun to see and I loved the way it played out in the movie and it translated over really well from the book and just the characters were all really fun and that's all I really have to say about the characters. I will move on to the wrap up here. Overall the movie was really fun. There was lots of action but there was also a lot of like really good resolution and they did a really good job tying everything up even if the resolution didn't have as much time get allotted to it as it did in the book. It still did a really good job and I really enjoyed watching this movie. The story was really good. There was loss. There was like just celebration at living and it did a really good job wrapping up the movie series. As far as book to movie adaptation, it followed the book pretty well. There are a few things here and there that I felt were like reasonably major and a few things that had pulled over from the second book into the third movie. Like nothing game breaking, nothing story changing but enough that it did impact my enjoyment of the translation a little bit. Which leads me to my two scores. In terms of a movie unto itself, uh, I really feel that Return of the King is a four and a half out of five stars. <laughs> uh, they did a really good job. It was really entertaining. It was a lot of fun to watch. And having grown up watching it without reading the books, I can say yes, the movie as it stands unto itself is really great. And now, I will give you the book to movie score. And now having read the book and then watched the movie, I can say that they still did a pretty good job with the book to movie adaptation. And it, I've, like, it wasn't the best I've ever seen because the first one in the book in the series translated much better. Um, but it was still very close to the a book. And like I said, even though the thing, there are a few things missing here and there, they were not story altering, they were not enjoyment breaking. Having grown up watching the movie without them, you wouldn't, unless you knew they were there, you wouldn't be able to tell. Which leads me to my book to movie adaptation score. And this one I am giving a four out of five. Uh, for the reasons I've listed, like I said, there are a few things that irked me that, that, that were dropped, and a few things that were carried over, which wasn't as accurate. But overall, they did a really good job. And this trilogy really stacks so highly up the list in terms of book to movie adaptations that you really can't expect anything less than a four. And that's all I have to say today about the about the movie. Uh, if you guys want to let me know what you think in the comments below, I will get back to you when I can and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!